You're still listening to Celebs Talk Over. My name is Ife Ajagbe, and we do have Titi Lokwe of Delala in the building. Titi Lokwe is the founder of Parent Child 360 Initiative. She's a certified family and child counselor. Uh, she renders counseling services to children, parents, and child related organizations. And that's practically everybody. So that means that she goes out there. She goes on the streets, trust me. Like she goes on the streets to tell as many people as possible about what they need to do to protect the child. And it's not just the girl child, it's the girl and boy child. As long as you're yeah. a child, as long as you're a human being, she's about you. So that's why we brought her to the show today. So you're very welcome, Titi Lokwe. Thank you, Ife. Thank you so much for the opportunity tonight. Thank you. Yeah, very welcome. So um, we're going to start off this way. The topic of the show for today, normally we don't even have topics, but for today, <laughs> the topic is the blame game. You know, when a rape case happens, who's to be blamed? Do we blame the rapist, the victim, the society? Who are we supposed to blame for this? We all blame ourselves. All of us have failed in one way or the other. So we all are taking the responsibility except the victim. Mm. This is not the time mm. to blame the victim. This is a time to support the victim. This is a time to be uh, a, a suiting balm for the victim. Mm. So we all are to be blamed. Okay. I, as a mother, a husband, the society, the faith-based organizations, the government, and everyone inclusive has to be blamed. But this illness okay, so we have in the society right now. So you're saying that for neighbors that saw these things happen and did not say anything, it's cooking my business. Yeah, okay. they have to be blamed. Okay, interesting. So um, from there now, we go straight to the usual thing we hear these days. Oh, it is what she wore. Why was she wearing <laughs> that? was practically nude. She was almost naked. Why was she not properly dressed? It was the indecent dressing that caused it. In fact, she said, which is she going to do, Steph? Eh? Which is she defined? Yeah. So, really, what do we say to people like this? Uh, to such people, we should stop making excuses for sexual assault offenders. And uh, we should also actually hold perpetrators accountable rather than blaming victims. Because that's the problem we are all having right now. Everybody keeps blaming the victim and nobody has been able to apprehend a perpetrator and bring them to justice. Look at for the instance of Hua. She was in the church and that's a safe place. Look at mm -hmm. for the girl in Ipadon. She was in the corners of her father's house and she was still mm -hmm. raped. So mm -hmm. why, are we, why are we trying to blame the victim here? Why can't mm -hmm. we also look at opportunities whereby we can apprehend perpetrators and you know make them to face the consequences of the terrible acts they've carried out you know so these are the issues we need to look into not just coming to say because of the dressing so are you telling me now that if i decide to wear uh, a, a, to show off a bit of my cleavage when i go to a party so somebody should come and pour pour hot water there and say because because you are making me you are enticing me with your chest I'm going to tore your clothes and I'm going to rape you. No, that's, we're giving excuses, unnecessary excuses to cover up an illness that is from the mind. Because carrying mm. out such an act is not just a day thing. It's something that the person has been nursing, thinking through, thinking of how to carry out the act. So, you know, it, 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 it's an illness that needs to be looked into. It's not just something mm. people will say, you know, men are, men are attracted to what they see. Excuse me. Who says women are not attracted to what to see? What they also mm -hmm. see? So we should stop these excuses, but rather to enlighten and educate ourselves to learn what we call discipline. Discipline of the mind, discipline of what we say, discipline of the attitude that we carry out in every phase of our life. True that. True. I totally agree with you. So uh, let's talk about another aspect. <laughs> the, the most important part. For somebody that has been raped, what is the first thing for you to do? Um, for the first thing I will tell the person is, it has happened, but it's the time for you to voice out. Most of the time when this thing happened, 
majority of the victim don't even think of their of their relative they just want a place of silence where they can hide themselves but it's not a time mm. to hide yourself it's a time to actually look out for people for organizations that can help you to bring uh, to to fight to support and you know, to ensure that you you are back on your, your feet so most times because of what i do in the society we tell people that we have organizations that you can run to if you see or you notice that your parents are not there for you people there's there's no support system there's no support system. even if there are support systems and your support systems are insisting that just sh sh to show you and to keep you quiet insist mm -hmm. that you need to speak out not because of you alone, because you need to heal and you need others to also learn from your story. So we have organizations, we have the Mirabel Center, we have the Stand to End Rape, we have the Heart Minders organizations, we have the Bimbo Dukoya organization, we have the Media Concern, we have Ben Bruce Foundation, we have Reva. So many organizations, some of these organizations I mentioned to you, I also collaborate with them because I'm more into advocacy, but these people carry out and to ensure that justice are taken out for victims. So I also, you know, and then I have, um, we have DSBLT, that's for Lagos State, that you can easily walk in and, you know, complain, you know, when some, something of such happens. So the first thing you need to do is speak out don't go into hiding speak out and go to the government hospital to ensure they carry out a thorough a thorough check up on you so that they can give evidences when such thing you know happens to you well i i also think that we have to face the reality that a number of you know uh teenagers or even children are not very close to their parents so yeah i agree uh, so would it be okay to say the first advice is actually for you to Google some of these organizations? Because they will pop up. Uh, if you go online, their websites will pop up and then you can easily make calls. Yes, yes. Um, no matter how bad it is, we, a child or a teenager always have a support system somewhere, somewhere. No matter mm. how bad it is. It could be a distant cousin. It could be a distant, you know, neighbor. It could be, they always have support. Teenagers sure. and children have a way of having friends that still listen to them. So if you mm -hmm. feel, because at that time, that victim also needs a support instantly. So they might need mm -hmm. someone to follow them to such places I've mentioned. You know, so they need to. They need to just get in touch with the closest support system. They know we we'll listen to them and we we'll not blame them for what had happened to them. So that's, that's mm -hmm. another thing. So you kept talking about support system. How? Let's talk yeah. about parents. Let's talk about society. How can parents and the society be perfect or fantastic support system for children? Um, the first thing, parents have a critical role to play when it comes to the healing process of any victim of abuse, whether sexual, whether neglect, whether emotional, whether verbal or physical. They have a critical role to play and they have responsibility to also ensure that such children feel a bit of comfort no matter how bad it is. You know, it's okay. not a time to abuse or to condemn the, what had happened to them. It's a time to even appraise them for speaking up and then giving them a pat at the back to say, well, yes, I know I also should have helped out, but now that has happened, we're in this journey together. It's just a word of assurance that such, you know, children, teenagers or whatsoever it is they need from their support system, a kind word, a form of empathy, you know, these are things that as, as little and as little neglecting it could be if individuals in their you know, precious homes can just give it out to children or to people around them. It goes a long way. So, you know, when this happened, what is the first thing you say to the child? Do you blame or you tell the child that we're in this journey together? I'm here for you. I'm here to support you. Whatsoever we need to ensure that we start the healing process, we are going. To, it's a matter of using we, not you. So it's mm. a we thing now. We're together in it, you know. So that is the support we're talking about. And then to ensure that even if the perpetrators are not apprehended immediately, let the children assure them that, you know what, 
we are going to ensure that we find a way to, you know, to ensure justice comes to you, no matter how bad it is. Give them words of comfort and, you know, keep praising them to make them also feel a bit of comfort and take them, if properly, you know, go to the hospital for checkup, you know, for whatsoever, anything that could show up later to ensure that they are taken to the hospital and they are well taken care of. So those are the support okay. systems we're talking about. Okay, and, and I, from going to the hospital, it looks also like uh, justice is easier and faster, and then people can, the culprits can be penalized quickly. Yeah. Because you're not destroying evidence. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So having a bath is not the first thing for you to do. No, not at all. Not at all. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Not at all. It's going to compromise the evidence that you're supposed to, you know, for people to have gotten from you. So it's, it's okay. not a way to go. So is reporting to the police in Nigeria an option? <laughs> as much as uh, we also say uh, the police are not our friends, they are not helping us. But I can truly be of, of a fact to tell you that when our police men and women are ready to work, they work all the way. So we should not neglect it. No matter how bad it is, we should still make it a point of duty to report the case at the police station. Because most of, like, um, a, a while ago, they call, a, they call, a, uh, they call up uh, the PRO to ask him questions. And most of these cases, uh, the police will say people don't come to complain and all. And he actually gave incidences whereby people don't actually report it. Because why? People will say the policemen will make fun of them. They will not, you know, they will laugh at them. But he's saying, if you come to the police station, report and insist to have a copy of your report. So you can show, to say, I have been to the police station. You know, most of the things that are happening to majority yes, that we don't also know what to fight for when we go to places like that. If I go to a police station to complain, I can just use my phone to snap that complaint I've written out and have an evidence for myself as well. No, it might not be immediately before, you know, to also show that I came to the police station to report. Okay, fantastic. Very because important. it looks like um, people don't, I, I don't know if it is that, maybe they report and then later come out and say, oh, no, don't worry about it, we'll settle it at home. Because uh, there's a figure I saw when I was reading up about this issue, that in 2017, 2,279 reported cases of rape and indecent assault, that was what we had, and then there were no convictions reported by the police. Only one out of 36 states reported no case of indecent assault. That means, you know, it was across 35 states. But yeah. there were no convictions. I, I don't know why that is the case. I Well, that's been three years ago. Hopefully, there, are, there is some improvement now. <laughs> Hopefully, there are convictions. Now. I can for fact tell you, I, the organization I collaborate with, like I told you, I do the, uh, the advocacy part. Why they do the, the, the intervention? They ensure anyone they get, they do the arrest, they, they you know, involve the police. They do. We do. But we do actually don't keep statistics in this part of the world in Nigeria. We don't. But there are actually conviction of offenders of as carrying out uh, assault or rape to people. There are. Okay. So uh, there's something important that we have to talk about, if we are being All fair. Right. You know, there have been cases of people uh, lying about the fact that they were raped. Yeah. It's becoming so, a trend now. Yes, yesterday I saw a story where three guys said that when they were teenagers, where a guy was reporting that when he was a teenager, you know, there were three of them on the streets and there was a neighbor that had this female guest. So this girl went to see this married man and the wife of the married man came around and caught her, started beating her. So these three teenagers decided to help and rescue the girl from the madame. And then the girl goes home, returns with her mother and brothers, and then points at the three boys and says that they were the ones that raped her. And that was why her clothes yeah. were torn. And then it became, they, yeah, the boys landed in Kirikiri. And wow. it was there that, you know, one of the boys just kept crying endless because he couldn't understand how his life turned upside down in, you know, in no time. And then it was the water that said, oh, what happened? And, you know, afterwards, the guy said, okay, you mm -hmm. know what, the police should go back and investigate. Luckily for them, the madame that beat the sister came to testify and said that, oh, she was one that beat wow. the lady. They, that was wow. how they released the boys. 
Now imagine wow. the trauma that you know this person still remembers and it's still painful for the person. Now imagine if the person actually just, you know, if there was a conviction and they went to prison. Wow. So what can we uh, do about and, the and, like this? And that's 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 another thing we um the, the police also didn't do well because before mm. taking them to the prison they should have done a thorough investigations they should have even find out why that lady came to that environment whom the lady came to see you know and all that before apprehending such young men innocent men for heaven's sake and i also mm. have noticed lately i was discussing with uh, my colleague today and i told her if you go to the city of twitter you will see a whole lot there people are becoming yeah and people are beginning to see that uh, it's dignifying to accuse people wrongly there there was a there was a, um, a guy i don't know if you heard about it a guy that was jailed for 28 years or 38 years that was lied against in us when he had nothing he never even he, ne he never knew about it and a young girl just accused him wrongly as well that he raped her and those are the days where but there was no dna and so that was the only thing that he, he can imagine that was the only thing after spending 28 years in prison so people should that we should we should this these are the illness we're talking about in the society because you're saying we're talking of rape now and nobody had raped you and you're lying you know come on come on we should have some form of dignity and integrity no matter how bad it is and i feel people are beginning to use that also to pay back to who also who so have had hurt them in the past and we need to be careful because it's not for today for posterity we judge anyone that lies against another person or because of hurt we should mm. forget what that happened in the past and move on we, rape is something we shouldn't joke with we should not joke about it we shouldn't we shouldn't so and we should so also all care about the lives of others yeah so let's be clear let's be clear break up is not a rape rape what i said break up is not rape they are not the same thing not at all <laughs> not at all do not accuse somebody because the person broke up with you exactly no, <laughs> so um also there's there's a very important thing that we need to clear quickly before we go on the show today uh it is the fact that a lot of people come online to say oh I'm not very clear about what rape really is. That's why people can come and lie to, you know, to for for traction or something or for for publicity. I'm not sure what it is. So, let's clarify it. We need to put a line and say this is rape, this is sexual assault, this is soliciting, this is sexual harassment, you know. So, what exactly is rape? Okay. Rape is a type of sexual assault usually involving sexual intercourse. or other forms of sexual penetration carried out against a person's consent okay. you know and okay. then when we talk That's about uh, awesome. when we talk about sexual assault we're talking about other forms of um, abuse that could have happened it could be the person just hit me on the bomb the person just it you know it could be even you know, molestation in the office molestation that's not rape But when we talk about rape is talking about forcefully taking carnal knowledge of an another person without his or her own consent that's rape yeah. and it's a type of sexual assault okay so also what is also rape in some states in Nigeria is if you sleep with or have sex with somebody that is less than 18 <laughs> whether they seem to have consent give consent or not As long as that person is recognized as a child under the law it is also rape. Yes, because that, at that time the child has no not you know the child cannot say this is what I I want to do. Mm. So you are coercing yeah, the child. If in mm. some of our times was if for anybody that wants to rape a child they groom them. They coerce them. They they are friendly with them. So you can see that there are lots of efforts the perpetrator put in to ensure that child is as is abused do you understand so it's not with the mm. consent of a child but when you are above 18 you know we say you are an adult 
and he's probably is either you give a consent to say i want to have i want the person to have a kind of knowledge of you or i just want to have fun or he, then when it's now forcefully done when you had even told the person no i am not interested then that's rape because it's forcefully done without your own consent so that's rape anything that involves force despite you keep shouting no i don't want because people must learn to understand no means no there's there's no other meaning to know <laughs> so when you when you take you know it, it, when you forcefully now take what is not yours then that's rape hmm Okay, very. That's very important. Also, I, you know, I hear some people. Some people will say, "Oh, what if she was the one that asked for it? She seemed like she was old enough. She, did, I didn't know she was not eighteen yet. She didn't tell me." <laughs> and was the, law. the law does not recognize that. Whether there was a part I read that really shocked me. It said that whether you were aware of that oh, child's <laughs> age or not, it does oh, not Lord. count. Yes, have reached that. So you need yes. to do your research properly. I mean, you know, roll with fellow adults. <laughs> That's yes. the most that <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. All right. Thank you guys for those that are joining in. Nom Tandazo. Rex Super Fresh. Hey, hello. Happy birthday to you. Uh, I am <laughs> Tolua Longweti. Toby. Olo Okere. Uh, Billion Boy. Muno Sings. What's up with you? Uh, Oye Fusia. All right, thank you guys for joining the conversation today. It's been fun. And thanks to those that joined the first time and joined again. Thank you very much. And Titi Lokwe, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you so much, Ife. It was a wonderful time. Always having fun with you anytime I come on your show. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Uh, All thank right. you. We've been talking with Titi Lokwe or Delola. She's a child rights advocate. Uh, she is the founder of Parent Child 360 Initiative, and she, you know, goes to everywhere. In fact, you see her on the streets. <laughs> if you look well enough, like if you step out now, you might see her. <laughs> 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 yeah. To talk about the rights of the child, to talk about how parents can help in protecting their own children. Trust me. Some parents do not know that they're not protecting their children. That's a conversation for another day. Anyway, thank you very <laughs> much. She was a celebrity for today. My name is Ife Ajagbe. I'm going to take this opportunity to appreciate my team, very fantastic team. Bola Dale, that's talking about Dale Greenix, is the one that will make this video look fantastic for YouTube. If you missed any part of this conversation, feel free to go on YouTube and subscribe to the Celeb Stop of our YouTube channel and watch the full video. Even if you want to listen to the full conversation, I'm sure you missed some parts. The full version is going to be on YouTube. So go there and watch the full video. And definitely big shout out to at I am unbeaten. Check him out on social media platforms at I am unbeaten. He's going to produce the sound for this. Even though we're doing it on Instagram, he will make sure that it is decent enough for radio. Big shout out also to Deji Plug, who's the publicist for this show. Thank you very much. My name is Ife Ajagme. Thank you very much again, Steve Lockman. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.